Hey everyone, welcome back to the RC Explained channel. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at temperature of the speed control as we put it at different current output values. We're gonna hold that constant for a duration of the battery and see exactly what kind of temperatures we get from the speed control. And the results might shock you. Let me know in the comment section below what you think is going to be the difference between 100% throttle versus let's say 80% throttle. Before we dive deep into this video, I wanna thank the patrons of the RC Explained community for supporting this channel and allowing us to go on a battery C rating adventure. We're gonna try and figure out C ratings once and for all. You saw the video that we did last time there, going through and understanding the performance we get out of a battery pack. I have a couple more battery packs that I'm testing. I'm also testing a few other variables and elements that come into the battery picture as well. So stay tuned for that. We're gonna have a lot more battery content in the next six months that cover all of these ideas and items. I may also introduce a new tier level just for the battery project alone. Link will be in the description below. Let's jump into our video topic for today. I'm gonna to run a bunch of tests at different throttle positions which are going to correspond to different current values. One value that's gonna we're gonna look into is at 100 amps. The next one we're gonna look at is 75 amps, 65 amps, and 50 amps or so. We're gonna review those values and see exactly what kind of temperatures we get out of the electronic speed control at all of those. Your lowest percentage there or percentage of current is going to be at the lowest throttle position that we're gonna be testing here today and the highest current somewhere around 100 amps that's going to be at 100% throttle. Here's the first graph that we have. This is at 100% throttle, which is essentially equal to about 100 amps. Now what you do find on this graph is that the temperature starts off at the mid, you know, 20 degree mark and it climbs up to about, about the 40 degree mark and it has a couple peaks at 45 that you see here. But generally speaking, it's around an average of 39, 40 degrees Celsius for this period of time. Now, if we go into our next graph, this is 75 amps, which is about 85% throttle. This is where we see the maximum amount of temperature increase compared with all of our graphs that we're gonna look at here today. We have an average of about 57 degrees Celsius, and it does seem to peak just past the 60 degree mark up here at 63 degrees Celsius. So quite a bit hotter than 100% throttle. Now we look at the next graph and it does come down a little bit. Now we're averaging around the 50 degree mark and we got a maximum spike upwards of 59. So you can see generally speaking, we're probably around the 50 to 53 degrees as a good average. If we look at our last graph here, we're at 50 amps. Keep in mind 50 amps is about 50% of where we started from and we're seeing 75% throttle to achieve this 50 amps. We're seeing now an average about 47 degrees or so and we saw a peak of about 53, 54 degrees. That's at least what it says here on the maximum. We got some weird spikes here. Don't know what that's all about. But in general, this is still higher than 100% throttle. If we go back to the first graph that we have, we're seeing an average of 40 with a max of 40. 45. So even at that 75% throttle, pulling only half of the overall current amount, we're still seeing higher temperatures here. I don't know about you guys, but this gives me every reason to say, why am I holding 100% throttle at the flying field? Well, it's for the health of my speed control. Well, there you have it. At 100% throttle, we actually see the lowest temperature out of all of those tests. Now you can imagine as you continue to use less and less throttle, there's gonna be a point in time where you actually get less heat out of the speed control. We know that. But what's really interesting is where you are at 100% throttle. This is the maximum amount of power that that speed control is transferring from the battery pack to your brushless motor and at 50% of that current 
output, you're having much less power output, which is also driving more heat. Very interesting to see that. The big question here is what is actually driving that? Let's break it down by looking at just one of the three phases that exist inside a brushless motor. We're not gonna look at the other phases because we really need to dial into one and what's happening within one phase is actually happening in all the phases at different moments in time. If you were to consider what is happening at 100% throttle, the ESC is turning on that one phase and for the entire duration that that one phase is required, it's going to maintain maximum voltage and it's not gonna actually shut off any part of that phase at all. Now, if you look at this image here, this is what's happening if we are at partial throttle. So assume this is somewhere around 50% throttle. You're gonna have that phase actually turned on 50% of the time, and then that phase is gonna be turned off for 50% of the time. Essentially what you're doing here is you're chopping up the power that gets fed to the brushless motor by essentially taking the voltage and making it look like you're only using half of the voltage. And that's because the phase is gonna be turn on and off about 50% of the time. The motor's gonna see half of the voltage that your battery is at. And that's how you're gonna get approximately 50% of the speed. So what's happening here is your ESC has to work really hard as it does this 8,000 times per second and that is at 8,000 hertz. Now what's really interesting is you can change this value in the ESC and that can go all the way up to 24,000 hertz for most ESCs and then there's some other ESCs that can go well beyond this to some ridiculous amounts of numbers. Now if you look at 24,000 hertz, this is the time that that ESC is going to be switching on and off. Every cycle occurs in this amount of time which is very, 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 very small at 24,000 hertz. So you can imagine how frequently your ESC is needing to turn on and off when you're using some partial throttle. And keep in mind, when you're at full throttle, none of this is happening. It's using 100%, there is no off time at 100% throttle. So every time that your ESC is at a partial throttle, it has to work hard. So now what I wanna look at is the actual efficiency of this process. We know that the ESC's gotta work harder because it's gonna be turning on the circuit thousands and thousands of times for every second that goes by. But in addition to this, if we look at the overall system performance or system efficiency, if we connect the entire system from battery pack to brushless motor and we run it at 100% throttle, you're gonna see different efficiency values for every percentage throttle that you are using. Here's a chart where we can see our throttle percentage and our efficiency. I have motor efficiency here, but it is system efficiency. Here we start the test at about the zero second mark, and you can see we got a throttle percentage of around 20% or so, and that gives us about 35% total efficiency. As we go and increase the throttle percentage, we can see our efficiency increasing all the way up to 78%. And then we try to have some backup data and have repeat results. So instead of going all the way up, we use the same battery and we're coming all the way back down in our throttle percentage. At 100% throttle, we're gonna have a little bit less power being consumed. You can see that we have a total amount of electrical power of 119 versus the 121 we just had. And we can see that go down to 77.5% efficiency all the way down to 20% throttle where we're sitting back down at 34.7%. If we actually look at a cleaner graph of all this data represented, here it is. As you increase in your throttle position, you can clearly see that the system efficiency is increasing by a substantial amount at very small amounts of throttle, we have very low system efficiencies, but near 100% throttle, we have our 80% efficiency for our system. Well guys, that pretty well does it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so you can see all the amazing content that we're gonna be coming out in the next six months here. And thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.